Hello and welcome to my channel. In today's video we're going to be talking about selling your artwork online for the first time. This was something I was asked about a few weeks ago if I could make this video. So really I want to start by saying these are just my ideas and you're going to have to sort of get stuck in and find out what works for you because the internet evolves all the time and things that work for me may not work for you and vice versa so it's just worth feeling your way and having a go. But you can't sell anything on the internet if you haven't got your work up there. So the first thing to say is don't be frightened about putting yourself out there and putting your work online. So the very first thing to really think about is your photography of your work. If you've not got a really good clear image of your work, you're not going to be able to sell it online. So that's really the most important thing before you even think about putting your work out there is to have some good photographs. You might not have a fancy camera, you might just be relying on your iPad or your phone to take a photograph, but try and take the best that you can. If you can, take your pictures in natural daylight and also go on to YouTube and have a look at all the photographers there that are going to give you advice that I can't give you on taking the best photograph of your work dependent on your camera. So whichever camera you've got, pop it into the search engine and there'll be somebody there teaching you how to use that camera and get the best out of it. So a few things that I do, I always have my camera on a tripod so that way I'm not going to get any shake or any blurring and I have it very very well lit. So I either go outside and have natural lighting or I've got daylight bulbs in here and I use those as well. And take several images. We've got digital cameras, it doesn't, we don't need to worry anymore about wasting film and things like that. So take plenty of images using different uh, shutter speeds etc and pick the best ones out and have a, a, a go through them. Also make sure that your image is plumb to the camera. So if it's slightly tilted when you, uh, depending on where the camera is, if your picture's a little bit tilted and they're not at the same angle, you're going to end up when you come to crop your image with that image not being quite square um, set right. So that's one thing you really need to remember as well. But like I say, go on to YouTube, have a look at some photographers and get advice from them on taking photographs of your work, unless of course you're already proficient in that. So that's absolutely the number one most important thing is to have a very good image of your work, keep it on your computer but also back it up as well, back it up to the cloud, whatever you use for backing things up so that you've, when you later sell that work you've still got a record of that image and keep things written down, keep dates on them and keep everything recorded. Now to go back to my first online sale, I didn't actually set off with the intention of selling the picture that I sold first and it was quite a few years ago now. And what happened was I'd done a little drawing in ink, very, very simply, of a tree. And I popped that on Twitter just to show friends and followers what I'd done. And it was in the very early days when I hadn't even started selling my work. And somebody saw it from the other side of the country and it reminded them of a tree that they were very fond of. And they asked if the work was for sale. So after, after having a little bit of discussion with my husband about how much I should charge for it, I went ahead and sold it to this person on Twitter. And it was very easy to use PayPal and send them an invoice so we, that way you knew that you got the money before you went and posted it off. So that's something very important. Don't go and post anything unless you've got the money first, which, you know, sort of stands to reason really. I'm sure you wouldn't do that, but just be cautious about things like that. So, and also factor in your postage. So you need to familiarise yourself, whichever postage uh, service you're using, whichever country you're in, with the pricing of that. So I have, if you go to the post office here, they will give you um, a little leaflet with all the prices and the weights in. And that's just handy to have by your computer so that you know that you're covered and that you're not going to be undercharged or out of pocket with your postage. So that's something you need to bear in mind. Measure everything and weigh it so you know how much it's going to cost you before you go ahead and give the customer that information about your postage costs. And don't forget to include your packaging in that as well if you've got to buy things for packaging, bubble wrap, etc. So that went really well and I was quite surprised that was my first online sale. So really the, the moral of that is, is put your work on Twitter and Facebook and, and Instagram. If you've already got things on there, um, you know, use that, use those platforms just to pop a little snap up and, you know, say that this works for sale if you would like it and you might find people approaching you. And of course you need to use the right hashtags in those circumstances. So have a look at what hashtags other people are using. Um, 
if you use ones that are very often used, very short ones, you might find that it just gets completely lost. If you use hashtags that are over complicated, then nobody's searching for those and it won't get found at all. So go somewhere in the middle. So just do a bit of research with which hashtags people are using. At the moment, although I've got Facebook and Twitter, I am, I am tending to use Instagram a lot more for my work than I am for the, those other two platforms. Um, I just feel that Instagram is really suited to artists because it's so visual, it's so easy to use, you've got your phone to hand. So always have a, again, have a good image to put on Instagram and don't just put things on there for the sake of it unless you've got something nice to share because it's all about the visual. So I would recommend Instagram, but don't spread yourself too thinly. Don't spend so many hours on the internet uh, that you're actually not spending time doing your work because if you haven't got that time to do the work, then you're not going to be able to sell it. So it's more important that you're actually painting and that you're working rather than spending all your time trying to market on um, online. So just think about not spreading yourself too thinly and not being on too many platforms. Just concentrate on perhaps two or three things. So as well as having a good clear image of your painting, you also need to write down the measurements. So when you've finished it, make sure it's measured. The depth as well actually, because a lot of um, platforms do require you to have the depth written down. So measure you, your height and the depth and the width and have that all kept so that you can refer back to it again another time. So take and also take images, take photographs of it once it's in the frame as well because obviously people want to see what the frame is like. Each platform varies on the amount of information that they want. Some want more information than the others, um, really depending on where you're selling. But really think of it as if you were going to an exhibition, the basic things that you're going to need are a title, a short description of the work, the media, if it's mixed media or oil or whatever, and the measurements, like we said earlier. That's what people really need to know. So a brief description, don't go make it too wordy and too long, but obviously in this case you'll be saying it was a landscape, etc. And a good eye-catching title. So put a bit of time into thinking about your titles. I find it difficult thinking about titles. You can ask other people for their input. You could even use that as a social media post, pop your new work onto social media and say, I'm stumped for an idea for a title. Have you got any ideas? And that way you're involving people with your work right from the start. So to recap, don't over worry too much about your description and things. As long as you're accurate with your measurements, really the main thing is that photograph, as I've stressed before, because that is what's going to sell your image. It's whether people are taken in by that image. It's not how wordy you've been with a very long flowery description about it because a picture says a thousand words. That's the most important thing. Get your image, get your measurements, a nice title, brief description, and then the postage information. Like I say, keep the information you've got from the post office on how much things are going to cost you. And you really think about which countries you're going to post to. Some countries you might want to avoid if there's problems. Um, and also you really need to think about posting glass because sometimes that isn't covered by insurance. In fact, very often in this country it isn't covered by insurance, so your glass isn't covered. I tend to try and sell the smaller things with glass where I, I know that I can get them nicely wrapped up. The larger things with glass, it's much easier to try and sell them from home. Um, things like this are much easier to sell when there's no glass there and it's light. And think about sending things overseas and how much that's going to get bashed around etc. So you're going to need several layers. Something like a canvas. Obviously it could be pierced by something sharp when it's in transit, so you might want to put a board over the front of it, but then that's going to make it heavy. So really think about that, all these little things before you start. And when you're beginning, perhaps stick to selling smaller items until you get going and get you know used to the pricing of the postage, etc. Always, always keep a proof of posting so that if there is any problems with insurance, if it doesn't get there, you've got that proof of posting. I usually send things signed for. Um, in this country, it might be helpful for you to know that in the ordinary post, things are covered up to £20 only. So if it's not signed for, if you're just sending it in the ordinary post, even if you've got a proof of posting, it's only covered up to £20. So that's fine when I use that for a little inexpensive print or some cards, that's absolutely fine. But anything over that, any pictures, you're going to be wanting to have it signed for or special delivery or parcel for.
I always keep all my packaging that I get, if I get something sent in the post, I keep the bubble wrap, the tissue paper, the boxes, because they will all come in handy at some point. So try and re reuse things if you can. So I hope I've covered a few things for you there, some tips that might get you going selling your work online. The platform that's worked best for me, I have to say, is Artfinder. So if you want to take a look at that, I will put the link to Artfinder in the description below. Um, that's a really handy one. There are new ones coming along all the time, so you might want to try them or you might not, but look into them, ask other artists on forums if they've had any problems with them, etc. You really want to look into things and make sure that uh, they're all above board and work well. But I can recommend Artfinder, it has worked for me. And like I say, go on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter as well. And actually now I'm thinking about it, one thing I haven't mentioned that I sh really should have done was the importance of having your own website. You can get free websites, you don't have to pay a fortune to build your own website. And if you have a shop area in your website, it's much better to drive people to that than it is selling anywhere else because you're keeping the commission, you're not paying anybody else commission. But obviously you're not going to get the same amount of traffic on your own website as um, you're going to on things like Artfinder or Saatchi. But you can drive them there using your social media and you can build that over the years. So make sure you optimise it for Google, for the search engines and you drive people to your own website. Because if anything happens to any of these other platforms and they disappear overnight and you're no longer on there and you can't rely on them, at least people who've bought your work in the past will know where to find you. It's very important to have that one place in your website where people can go and find your work. And, and correspond with you. So a lot to think about there. I know I've sort of rambled on a little bit. I'm hoping you found that useful. If there's anything else that I haven't touched on that you really want to know, if you want to pop that in the comments below and I'll try and answer that as much as I can. So really to summarise, for those of you that want to sell your work for the first time online, is just to get yourself out there. Open an Instagram account, research your hashtags and get your work out there and enjoy it. And for those of you that already sell your work online, it might be helpful if you put in the comments below things that might help other people. If we give each other tips and ideas, that's always useful. So talk to other people, see what works for them and try and find out what works for you because it's all going to very much depend on your subject matter and your target audience and the country that where you're living. Okay, so I hope you found that useful. Thank you very much for watching and I'll be back again soon with more tutorials and demonstrations. Enjoy your painting and bye for now.